You may be wondering why I'm lying on my couch with a pillow over my face. Well, as a creative artist, I tried to showcase my expression through how I make my videos, and this shouldn't come to anyone's surprise that I feel downtrodden at times with the work that I do, both in my personal life and my professional life. Now I know many of you are probably turning off at this point in the video, but please, let me explain as this isn't all about me. I'm not that vain, as you will learn through this video. I've been making content on gloving for 5 years now, out of the 13 ongoing years of my gloving career. That may seem surprising to some, and minuscule to others, depending on when you started in this art form. And in that time, I've grown a lot through my experiences in this unique position. It is interesting to look back on my older content, cringe at the immature production I put into it, and try not to fixate on my past shortcomings moving forward. To which you can clearly see how much of a difference I've made with how I make my videos now. The thing that you probably don't notice when it comes to my content is how little engagement I receive from the audience. Granted, I know from my own personal experience being part of the Glovin community that many of us are lurkers, and the activity you do see online is from a very small vocal minority. Again, depending on where you're looking. But what isn't discussed is the parasocial reality we find ourselves in today's day and age. It's this duality that we find ourselves in a peculiar situation, living a double life that, if you weren't born before the age of the internet, wouldn't even bat an eye towards because of how integrated it has become in our daily lives. I can already hear some of you grumble under your breath at this boomer take. But have you seriously taken a step back from your daily routine and examined what is going on around you? It's honestly strange to me to see how we as a society, let alone as a species, engage with each other, that being less physical interaction and more online interaction. This is all predicated on what it is that you are engaging with, of course, but it does seem to be across the board for everything. I mean, we can just hop onto our phones or computers and with a few clicks and punches on the keyboard, have whatever our hearts desires to consume. However, if you are like me, then you notice that something is missing with this whole new paradigm that global society has engineered. When it comes to the internet, it often feels like we're just sending things into this void of binary codes and receive rushes of dopamine when we get responses we're seeking for. Then, there is always the more infectious, insidious reaction we manifest when we get responses that we don't want. Outrage and violence. Sure, hearing it sounds rather hyperbolic to you, but it's true when you look at the past 7 years or so, and examine how populations behave on their respective platforms they occupy. From the old vanguard of Facebook and Twitter to the new burgeoning vanguard of TikTok and Twitch, you can see what people are fixated on and how they respond to it. However, I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch a video about social media and what it brings to us as a society, because that sounds really depressing and boring. At least to me it does. What I'm here to talk about is something that may seem trivial to many, but has more weight on everything we do in a community than mere words that we enunciate. The impact that we have, with our actions, on the people whose presence we are never aware of. This thunderously silent impact that we may never notice unless someone speaks up about it. This is what happened to me when I have been feeling doubtful on whether or not I should continue making content on gloving. And now I am imploring you to listen to my experience, so you too can understand the impact you have in your community. It shouldn't surprise you that I feel like the biggest imposter in the gloving community, and some of you simply don't care about that. Maybe it's part of my imposter syndrome that I think many members in the community really don't care what I have to say, or what I try to do to further the art of gloving. Most of the time, I feel like I'm being actively avoided by the majority of the gloving community for whatever reason they have. Like I'm a sick, stray dog. 
Did no one come to save me just because they missed me? I'm standing over there with him. It's true that I can't please everyone, and I don't even try to do so, because that's a true losing battle that is impossible to win, no matter how hard you try. But what does it say to you when you only get one or two comments, or even no comments at all on many of your videos that you publish? What am I supposed to think when I receive only silence from the people who do watch? I'm sure some of you are thinking, why are you so concerned about this? Well. I ask because I have a very different situation when it comes to my non-gloving related content and the reception I receive from the audience of that. Yes, I make videos on a very, very niche genre of manga. I mean, it's so niche that there's not even an official anime adaptations of it anywhere. Not even an OVA or an ONA, which is a new one for me. Who cares? And yet, to this day, I get more and more comments on my videos from years past with appreciation of my work. Simply stating how they are just glad that someone is out there trying to spread the word of that niche genre and that they can share my videos to make it easier to introduce others to it. Now, I know what you must be thinking or even trying to say down in the comments. You can't compare these two things that they're very different things with their own respective audiences that probably has very little overlap. While that is certainly true, I'm not comparing the audiences, nor the subject matter of my videos. I'm evaluating myself based on the work I do in two different fields, and assessing why is one showing healthy growth, while the other one is struggling. The thing I came to realize is I was suffering from the effects of a parasocial dichotomy that the internet has fostered into this day and age. What do I mean by this? Without having to derail this video for a whole class lecture on parasocial relationships, I'll just link a video in the corner to give you a start to look into it further. But typical social interactions are made up with a plethora of different minute factors that only our subconscious picks up on. Things like tone, body language, intent, volume, and delivery all play into our understanding of social interactions. But what happens when you remove most of those things and place a barrier between two people? You get what we see every day on social media. Miscommunications, misinterpretations, and hyperbolic emotionality. That's not even mentioning people's selective reading to text on screen. When we don't get the input that we usually get in a social interaction, we substitute it with a different source. And what is the source if it isn't the people we're interacting with online? We get it from within ourselves, because that is the only source left to help us understand. It's here that we run into problems with our digital existence, because it's completely artificial and fabricated by algorithms which dictate what we interact with. Of course, these things can be manipulated by outside forces. Whether you think that is a conspiracy or not, it is the truth. And when we put things out there that gets little to no interaction, it can feel as if you are being isolated into a digital purgatory, which is what it feels a lot of the time with my gloving content, as if I was invisible and unable to make contact with people. This, of course, started to make me question whether my work had any value at all, and would there be any loss if I just stop altogether? Am I simply not what the community wants? When I express this to close friends and colleagues of mine, this is the response I get from them. I don't necessarily feel that I'm what the new generation wants. As, I don't want to say spokesperson, but in terms of the face of their generation of gloving. Kind of you know what, does, it, does that make sense? Well, I don't agree with you, bro. You, I, yeah, I think you could read into it hard enough. If I you don't want agree to. with you, man. I think I think gen. you're, I think you're, I think you're a great spokesperson who's 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 doing all the right things. I think you're you're currently going through some personal stuff with the with the Glover Academy. I mean, not Glover Academy with the with the Glover uh, community. Sure, whatever. But I feel like you're like a great guy to do it for. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, yeah, you're a great guy to do it. I don't know what you're talking about. I, well, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm so inundated with my generation of Glovers and how they've responded to me. And maybe it's because I've been just chasing the wrong audience the entire time. But it's just one of the things I've felt after like five years and seeing such very little dividend or 
what's the word i'm diminishing returns yeah. that was the word i was like yeah diminishing returns. well that's the thing bro with gloving content creation like it's tough man i think it's 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 all almost well i don't like to think of it that way i just think of it as kind of like a like a little stepping stone mm -hmm. and it's like some random dude in the future is gonna find your channel like how i did then it's like then that's a freaking pot of gold oh, go ahead Leo. sorry i saw you really <laughs> you guys are talking about me i'm new gen that found peter that's what I'm saying, bro. It's like the proof is here that you're doing something right, bro. So why is it that I feel the way I do if people have expressed things to me? Ultimately, I'm not sure why that is or why it makes me feel this way, but I still feel like an imposter. Here's the thing though. What I'm feeling is a lie to the reality of my work. And that's what I need to show people if they too feel like they don't have an impact on gloving as a whole. I thought I had no merits to stand on in order to be recognized as a figure within the community, but look who I've had on my channel, and what they have said here. Look at the sheer amount of work I've put out for years on a weekly basis, which I know not another person in this community has done. I only needed to recognize and accept the reality that I can never know who will be impacted by the work I do, because the internet will never show me their thoughts. Only they, the audience, can do that. And if they don't, then I must respect their decision, but it doesn't dismiss the merit of my work. Something has changed in the gloving community, whether you want to believe it or not, that change has already happened. If you haven't seen my video on Amazing Light's closure and the effects of such, then I suggest you do as I predicted a vacuum effect and currently witnessing it taking place. Much of this can be chalked up as gloving, gloving drama, 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 with how much infighting that is occurring inside the biggest gloving group on Facebook. And yet people wonder why Glover's Lounge is a private group. I know some people are going to be like, um, actually Glover's Lounge is a private group because- We know, we know, everybody knows. No one thinks you're smart, shut up. Granted, some of the disputes happening within the community have some merit that I suggest you do your own investigation into those matters on your own, as this channel isn't a drama channel. We got plenty of those going on the internet already, and I can't help but ask how or why people are so into things like that. The thing I want to focus on is what I've had expressed to me from other members in the community, and share with the people who have been hesitant to commit to anything in the community. So much in society has changed, and yet I feel so many people think how we used to do things still work to this day. Sure, some of it does, but a lot of it doesn't anymore even if we really try. Something I learned to accept recently is that I'm much older than I was when I started, and how we did things then is no longer necessary to continue doing. Gloving has grown from being something in the counterculture realm into its own niche subculture that, while still suffering from the stigma, sprouted its own identity that has also changed with time. First, we had a central competitive circuit that brought the sportsmanship element to the community and pushed innovations in a way I'm sure many didn't think would make it. We got to see many people's stories of when they started and how they moved through the ranks to make it to the top of the charts. We also got to see people create things within the community with different project videos, gatherings, and workshops. We also had to witness a very powerful company fall from grace and slowly faded away. Along with it, most of the structures they put in place for the community to thrive on. This is where we are now, a subculture that has been liberated from the stranglehold of a centralized company and now stands on the precipice of an unknown territory with uncertainty. However, this should not sound scary or fearful, but rather to instill hope and inspiration for the future generations of Gloving. We have smaller companies making new products for us, while still having some of the old Vanguard vending out custom orders. We still have people organizing competitions on a more conservative scale to IGC, economically speaking, while others are branching out on how to curate online competitions with different formats. We have people who are revitalizing their local communities that are being recognized for stepping up into the position of community leaders, while others are hosting online spaces to start their own communities in the digital world. And we have Glovers getting together to make content to help showcase gloving in a better light. As you can see, we have different merits than what we had in the beginning, where getting that company sponsorship and winning a comp is not the end-all be-all to gloving. 
It's collaboration from members of the community to provide a time and space for other Glovers to gather with the sole purpose to indulge into their passions, both online and in person. It's about curating our storied history and manifesting the imperfections of the past so the future can learn to be more wise than we have been. It's about taking action to plant the seeds that will sprout new life in the community instead of hiding inside an echo chamber, pining over the halcyon days of years past. <laughs>so with this change in merits comes a shift in our paradigm of gloving and i'm going to do my part to help it grow gloving table talks came about because someone i call a close friend pushed me and others to do it and i'm happy to see the people we have on there bring such unique perspectives on gloving what i have come to learn the purpose of that series is to be the platform for older generations to give their insights and in how they develop their techniques and teach future generations with the knowledge that they impart now it is my turn to extend my help to the next generation, just like a friend did for me with my content. For a while now I've been thinking about my place in the community, and the future of the community if I ever need to step away from making content. I would be very sad to see something that I have loved fade into obscurity because I was no longer able to contribute to it. I know many people will tell me that it wouldn't change anything, but I beg to disagree. So instead of letting my thoughts depress me like that. I'm working on taking action to nurture the field of gloving content with the people who want to contribute to it by being the person I needed when I started my journey. I want to make this clear. I am not going anywhere. Even if there are many people in the community who wish that I would just leave and never come back. There is a lot of work that needs to be done before I throw in the towel and call it quits. I'm just making sure that any unfinished work will be completed if I ever had to leave. A while back, I released a trailer for a new series that I am producing where I have gathered four unique individuals who I feel can be the same inspiration to those generations of Glovers as we of the previous generations did for theirs. The purpose for this is to provide the same platform for newer Glovers to be able to discuss aspects of gloving just like how it's been done on Gloving Table Talks, but with a twist. Puppet has founded the Gloving Academy and with it, a new paradigm in teaching gloving to newcomers and seasoned veterans who want to try a new approach than how they have learned before. The Academy is where this series will be hosted for recording sessions, with the hope to move it to a live event for audience interaction. But it's also through these teachings that these four will embark on an odyssey into the new age of gloving. My role in this new series is the cameraman and editor, as this is ultimately their show in the end. This will also not be posted on my channel either, as I want this to belong to the ones who are running the show. I only want to help with some of the workload that comes with making content, and I wanted to show the people who think I'm trying to benefit off of this endeavor that this isn't about the money, and it has never have been about that since the very beginning. And I just love the reaction I got from my colleagues when I spoke about how people said that to me. That's why I was afraid of having it on my channel, because the first thing a lot of people, when I told people I had this idea, the first thing everyone was saying to me was, oh, so you, you want to reap the benefits of getting new Glovers on your channel so you can, I was just like, that's I don't not know who you surround yourself with or who you're talking to right now, but you need to quit talking to them. Record this shit right now and f*** them. Whoever's telling <laughs> Peter that this f***ing trying to reap the benefits, f*** them, bro. Like, we get like uh, how yeah. many views on YouTube, bro? Yeah. Like, was it seven bucks? Yeah. <laughs> So here I am, making the attempt of proving them wrong with my actions. If you want to help prove those people wrong, then stay tuned for their first video, which is their session zero. Which is a great session to hear new perspectives with flourishing minds in the community, and support their endeavors with this as well as their other projects. As for me, I'm going to keep doing what I need to do, because something a person of my generation once said, Acknowledge your haters, but keep doing your thing, because if you stop doing your thing, that's when the haters win. You gotta just keep striving, do your thing, and you get to where you want. That's it, let's Swag.